What's up everybody and today we're reacting to US enemies are not gonna like this video This is about like a land invasion of America Which I have a lot of opinions on about land invasions of America You have to remember I am living in the UK, but I am both a UK and a US citizen Okay, I've lived in America for the past nine years. I grew up in England but I just moved back to England with my family. My wife is American. So I have a different perspective. Even though I was in the British Royal Marines Commandos, I have a different pers perspective on this. Um, before we get into it, I'm going to give you... Well, before I start the video, I'll give, my, I'll give you my opinion at the very start of the video. But there'll be a link down below to the original video. Please go and check that out. Give it a like. There'll also be a link in the description for my new project with my brother, Dreadnought Meteor. Please go and check that out. But let's shut up. Let's pull it up. Before I start, a land invasion of America will never happen. These kind of four things I think that could disrupt America. Civil war through politics. Um, cyber attacks, which are massive, happen very often. Um, economic disruption through like food and stuff, kind of like what we saw with COVID. And then lastly, sleeper cells. If there was like some sort of way of people getting into the country and hiding. And then all them sleeper cells being active. That's kind of what I think. But let's watch the video. Watch Look the at video. this chart. It compares military budgets of countries, but it's a bit different because it doesn't compare one country's military spending to another, but instead compares the US's military spending with the cumulative total of the nine other countries' military spending. We're yeah. all on the top 10 list of biggest spenders. The reason? Well, the United States spent over $800 billion on its military in 2021, thus outspending South Korea, Japan, Saudi Arabia, Germany, That's France, nuts. Russia, UK, India, and China. Think about how much that is. That is unreal. That is absolutely unreal. A lot of that money gets wasted, in my opinion. But that's unreal. Combined. So, there is frankly no worthwhile comparison to be made here. Yet still, after fighting wars in Afghanistan and Iraq, and after a trade war with China, as well as unfriendly relations with Iran and North Korea, the US has its fair share of enemies who undoubtedly want to hurt them in one way, shape, or form. It does, but there's no way of getting to it without the US finding it first because of how far away the US is, first and foremost. Not to mention the rocky terrain. They have different types of terrain, right? You've got the woodlands in the Pacific Northwest and the East Coast. You've got the deserts from down south. You've got the Rocky Mountains. You've got the Appalachian Trail. You've got so many different... You've got every different terrain. Everything. So, hypothetically speaking, <clears throat> despite such a well-equipped military, could an enemy ever successfully invade the US or make devastating damages to the nation in some way? I don't well, think so. as it turns out, this question was a bit harder to answer than I initially planned. Because the military is only one of the reasons why the US is so unconquerable. You see, the US is in an incredible position. Yeah. Geographically. And its secret weapon might therefore be its location. All you have to do is look at this map to understand why. For over Oh my god, look at that. It's, this literally just says what I said. Look at the terrain there. 50 years, America's territory has stretched all the way across the continent from the Atlantic to the Pacific Ocean. These huge coasts separate the US from any potential enemy. Yep. So even in wartime, the American mainland is very well protected. If there was ever a war with America, you would never see like a classic D-Day landing style. It just wouldn't happen. It wouldn't happen. Take World War II, for example, when America fought in both Europe and Asia at the same time. Barely any attacks happened on US soil during the entire war. Yeah. That meant American factories could keep making planes and weapons without interruptions, unlike the constantly bombed Soviet and British factories. Yeah, they, on did, top of that, they could just the keep Defense working. The Production Act allowed the president to allocate materials and facilities for national defense, direct companies to prioritize government orders, and offer loans to companies to make this happen fast that's another thing as well there's a massive private sector when it comes to the um, military industrial complex mass well i mean it is pretty much all private sector and the money in that is unreal in 2020 this law was used not to mention the fact that they might have alien craft which i won't get into in this video unless you want me to let me know in the comments. <laughs> to increase the production of ventilators and medical grade masks. So clearly it's a very useful law to have in the toolbox since the US still has a domestic industrial base with major shipyards, mm. aviation and automotive factories. A wartime scenario could easily involve switching to wartime production. Oh so my God. This may Look at the vehicles. 
makes sense. Not to mention the existing military industry which is already making tanks, planes, weapons and warships for the US military. Factories on US soil are a huge advantage because hey, oh. the US military oh. can protect <laughs> its supply I thought it like broke then for a second. I'm like, whoa, what's going on here? And simply <laughs> by defending its own territory. Very little has to come from outside compared to its enemies. The we very, need to yeah. constantly run. The complete, America is completely self-sustainable. They have their own oil, their own agriculture, everything. It's just a, it's a, it's a powerhouse. That's why for both location, for economics, for military, for spending, for money. Supplies across an entire ocean. I That's mean, so just cool. look at the size of the Atlantic Ocean and the even bigger Pacific to get an idea of just how long enemy supply chains would have to be. Yeah. Not to mention the fact that with today's satellites, it would be trivially easy to spot an invasion coming from thousands of miles away yeah. and take out enemy shipments before they ever reach the US coast. True. Supply lines are critical in any war, and the US military is well known for its excellent logistics capabilities. They have the added advantage of the 45,000 mile highway system, which was designed with troop movements in mind. I did not know it was designed with troop movements in, in mind, but I've traveled a lot of that. The last two years of being in a school bus in America and traveling the whole country, went down the whole 95, went all the way across the 10, up the 25 into Colorado. We went up the 15 from, uh, we went all the way to, U we went down to Yuma. We went, we went everywhere. We went everywhere. On top of that, the US has 140,000 miles of freight railway infrastructure. Yeah. Now sure, this can be a double-edged sword as enemies could use this infrastructure to penetrate into America's heartland. And infrastructure could definitely be a weak point if not probably guarded. Not to mention the rivers as well. You've got to remember that as well. There's some giant bodies of water in America. A good example of this would be this pipeline that runs over 5,500 miles from Texas to New Jersey and carries nearly 45% of the East Coast's fuel supply. In yeah. May 2021, a cyber attack shut down the pipeline for five days. I did and not know that. And this isn't a fluke either. China and Russia both support cybercrime groups that regularly attack government agencies and companies. It's true. I did a class on cybersecurity um, when I was doing my computer science degree. And um, we discovered, well, we didn't discover, we learned that um, the major companies in America, Google, Microsoft, all them lot, they would get hacked on a daily basis, like maybe every like 10 minutes or so, constantly. Or there will be attempt hackings. They are constantly getting bombarded. It's crazy. The former head lawyer for the NSA, Stuart Baker, told the Washington Post, quote, we're fighting the cyber equivalent of a yeah. land war in Asia every day. It's true. But America's infrastructure is more than just highways and internet cables. Back in the day, another kind of highway already connected the Midwest from north to south, the Mississippi River. I am on the ball. I am on the ball. Can I say the rivers? Can I say the bodies of water? It could help transport stuff. I'm on top of this. And the connected Missouri River is the fourth longest river system in the world. Massive. So yeah, this river has always been crucial to connecting the economies of major cities like New Orleans, Minneapolis, and St. Louis. Yep. Today, the river is still used to ship goods across America. So during an invasion, the Mississippi could likely help move troops and weapons too. What's impressive about the US's geography is how challenging it makes the US to conquer. And yeah. that might have to do with the diversity of terrains like deserts, swamps, and mountains. Everything. The Appalachian Mountains in the east and the Rocky Mountains in the west serve as major barriers to inland invasion, and the Great Lakes in the northeast form yet another barrier. The yeah. result <laughs> is that the flatter areas along the southern border seem like the best entry point. But the US... Yeah, but they're not going to get that. They're not going to get an invasion from Canada or Mexico. Relationships between them are stable. The people don't like each other, but the relationships are stable, even though some people would say they're not. And so that wouldn't, that wouldn't happen. And the amount of like intelligence we've got from both countries... Pff, compensate for these weaknesses I say we. with huge I don't live there anymore. troops stationed in California and Texas. Yeah. The coasts aren't any easier to invade with hundreds of thousands of troops stationed in military bases. 
Not to mention the fact that the US has peaceful relations with its neighbors to the north and south, which yeah, both have not. smaller populations and militaries if any turmoil was to unfold. To the east and west, the US has no neighbors as previously discussed, a fact which has led America to focus on other things instead of imminent invasions. Yeah. On top of that, the NATO treaty requires European and Canadian allies to come to America's defense if it's ever attacked. Yeah, you gotta remember that as well, America's not on its own. Like, NATO just adds fuel, doesn't it? Think about it. How big NATO is. Not just America, but NATO. Everyone's got each other's backs. That's it. Oh yeah, and in addition to its current military personnel, the US still maintains the selective service system. See, all males from 18 to 25 have to sign up for a lottery to be drafted in the case of a national emergency. Yeah. During the height of World War II, the US drafted over 3 million men per year. So this system could potentially expand the US's military personnel by several million. Yeah. And we're not even done yet, because besides all this, an invasion is still very unlikely for another reason. The Pentagon's unrivaled resources. As I mentioned in the beginning, the US's defense budget is unrivaled. The US spent almost three times as much as China in 2021 one That's and nuts. 10 times more than Russia. The result is that no country has enough ships or planes to get past the US forces. Not to mention we thought Russia was a powerhouse and look how terrible they've done at trying to get Ukraine, let's be honest. It's still going on, it's still dreadful, but they are dreadful on the ground Russia aren't they? According to one military expert, quote, the amphibious assault capability of the combined militaries of the world are simply too insignificant to get a beachhead on a coast. Yeah. And then we of course have the civilians, who have even more guns than the military. So maybe armed citizens could also join the fight against invaders. Yep. I mean, it's a possibility. And imagine, I, I know so many Americans that if there was an invasion they'd be like, let's go, let's do it. Like, they're all so keen for the fight, it's ridiculous. Urban warfare presents more challenges than fighting in open combat and often gives an advantage to the country defending its own territory. We only have to look at Russia's failed invasion of Kiev for proof of this factor. While urban areas make up a small amount of US territory, any invader would have to take control of cities to conquer the country, Yeah. since 82% of the population lives in these cities. Another advantage of armies defending their own country from invasion is the will to fight. According yes. to the Rand Accord, this is what I was just saying, the will to fight in America is pretty damn big, especially if they're getting invaded. Oh my god, could you imagine? They're not going to get invaded. It's not going to happen, ever. Operation, a think tank closely tied to the Pentagon, will to fight means the disposition and decision to fight, to keep fighting and to win. Mm. The report highlights the times will to fight was emphasized in US military doctrine, demonstrating just how vital it is to military victories. You can clearly see how that influenced the outcome of World War II and the Vietnam War. Yeah. When a country is invaded like Vietnam was, it's natural that the invaded country is more motivated to defend its land. Yep. I think it's safe to assume the same would apply during an invasion of the US. But let's shift gears for a bit and discuss one enormous US advantage I haven't mentioned, which is self-reliance for its food, energy, and weapons needs. Didn't I say that at the beginning? I'm on ball with this, man. I already know. I should make these videos, shouldn't I? <laughs> Take these green areas, for example. This land is mostly used for agriculture since only 2%... Also, California is used for a lot of agriculture. It's just a completely sustainable place. That's all it is. Center of America's land is in urban areas. Yeah. This low-lying land is a major reason why the US is nearly self-sufficient in agriculture and even exports food to many countries around the world. It also explains why America now actually has the most arable land in the world. That's right. The US has more arable land than India and China. What's more surprising is that India is only a third the size of the US, and China is slightly smaller but can only sustain large populations near its east coast. The crazy thing is that both of those countries have over 1.3 billion people, That's or about 1 today. billion more than the US population. And since the US is only projected to grow by another 100 million people over the next century, the US likely has enough resources to support a billion plus population, but they don't need to. As for energy, the US also has impressive amounts of petroleum and gas, especially in parts of Texas. It has around 44 billion- Just watched a video, a film, Killers of the Flower Moon, about Native Americans finding oil on their land and how it disrupted their lives. 
crazy film. Watch it. I'll read the book. It's a book. Um, acting's phenomenal. Directing's phenomenal. Film is tragically, in, it's it's so tragic, but also a, like a genuinely good film, especially for education and stuff. It just shows the horrors of finding oil on your own land. Just putting it out there. It's a good film. Check it out. Barrels of proved crude oil reserves and almost 500 trillion cubic feet of natural gas reserves. Holy! In fact, when you include biofuels, the US nuts. could be considered the largest oil producer in the world. Yeah. It seems like even the bad parts of US geography have a major silver lining. Holy. The Appalachian Mountains on the East Coast that I mentioned earlier aren't suited for farming, but they do have huge coal deposits that have been exploited for decades. And surprisingly, at least to me, America has the world's largest coal reserves and loads of other natural resources from energy to metals. But to share a bit of a weakness of the US, it turns out it doesn't have every metal it needs to defend itself. You see, it doesn't have lithium, right? I might be wrong there, which is obviously used for batteries and a lot of electronics right now. Pretty sure lithium's the one that they struggle with. This shiny looking rock is a mineral called antimony and is critical for making bullets and other oh, weapons and even that. night vision goggles. Oh. While antimony played an important role in World War II ammunition production, the last mine in the US closed in 1997. The US is therefore reliant on China and Russia, its two biggest military rivals for supply of this critical mineral. So the US does have weaknesses, but who could actually have the military might and most importantly motivation to try and invade the US. Well, the latest US defense strategy names the People's Republic of China as the US's most consequential strategic competitor. Yeah, China is definitely the biggest threat to America. Russia is the biggest threat to Europe. That's kind of the way I see it. And note that Russia poses acute threats. Beyond these two big threats, it also mentions North Korea and Iran. Mm. But let's focus on China for a bit. It's true that China is slowly building up its military capabilities, but it isn't even ready to launch an invasion on the island of Taiwan, let alone the west coast of the United States. Mm -hmm. I don't think I even need to mention how the loss of its largest trading partner would devastate the Chinese economy. Yeah, if America stopped buying goods, yeah, that'd be crazy for China. That'd destroy China's economy. It really would. Still, there's some reason for concern. If China disabled American satellites, it could debilitate the US military's ability to monitor troop movements in real time. Yeah. If you're thinking this sounds like science fiction though, you'd be wrong because in 2007, China successfully destroyed one of its own satellites with a ballistic missile. Holy. Floating 850 kilometers above the Earth, the destroyed satellite is at a similar altitude to US intelligence satellites. So China Did could not know theoretically that. destroy them too. In terms of Russia, well, they have now performed a similar test, which endangered the crew of the ISS. Taking out satellites is a bit extreme though, because it causes hazardous space debris that would affect all current and future satellites, yeah. that includes Russia's and China's satellites. Yeah, that's but true. Russia it's definitely China a bad are idea. already interfering with US satellites on a daily basis. Definitely they're just using idea. lasers and jammers instead of trying to shoot them down. What is even scarier though is China's recent investments in AI and quantum computing, which could change the future of warfare. I mean, imagine how hard it would be for the Pentagon to strategize against an enemy using an AI supercomputer to calculate decisions in milliseconds. But if we look at Russia again for a second, their military has turned out to be much more disorganized and incompetent than we imagined before their invasion of Ukraine in early 2022. Still, they're definitely a force to be reckoned with, with nearly a million troops, thousands of vehicles and specialized hacker units. As for other potential attackers, North Korea for example may boast that their nuclear weapons can reach the US mainland, but owing to their low budget and antique equipment, there's no way they could invade the entire US. Iran is a similar story, Just wouldn't except happen. that they don't yet have a nuclear warhead. Although. It's like I said, it's just feasibly impossible for them to do it. At least the classical way. They'd get slaughtered. They'd get absolutely slaughtered. They're not far off. Realistically speaking, both countries use nukes to preserve the regime rather than actually use them against their enemies. Yeah. Cuba and Venezuela are two other enemy nations in the US's backyard. They can't do anything to America though, let's be honest. But their troop numbers and military budgets are hardly enough to invade the United States. Yeah. And if all else fails to stop an invasion, we shouldn't forget that America is a nuclear armed nation itself. It has a triad of air, land and sea missiles, which make it impossible to take out entirely. 
Land missiles are stored in the center of the country and the sea missiles are in submarines which are constantly on the move, hidden away without a blip on the radar. Since it just seems at this point that unless America falls from within, it'll never fall. But they said that about Rome, didn't they? And it did, and it because it's because it fell within. It fell on the inside and therefore spilled out and destroyed the nation, which is what could happen to America, especially with American politics right now. The country is so divided. Since the Cold War, though, nuclear weapons have acted more as a deterrent rather than a direct threat. You see, the principle of mutually assured destruction essentially means anyone who uses a nuke will get nuked back, yeah. launching a chain reaction of nuclear warfare, eventually obliterating Earth and ending humanity. Yeah. But just for fun, let's compare nuclear arsenals. Alright, so the US and Russia currently have around 5,000 nukes, with around... That we know of. That we know of. 1,500 deployed at heavy bomber bases and on intercontinental missiles. Yeah. And then we of course have China. It has a couple hundred nuclear weapons, but none of them are deployed. Now, these numbers might seem high since they can literally eradicate humanity, yeah. but this is actually a low point from the peak of 70,000 nukes worldwide in the mid-1980s. Yeah, well, I mean, a lot of them are probably still around, let's be honest. Still quite worrying, though, is that while the US claims to have decommissioned over 11,000 nuclear warheads since 1994, China and Russia are thought to be increasing their stockpile. It but wouldn't surprise this, me. I hope you can see how costly it would be to even attempt an invasion of the US. Any hypothetical invasion would have to overcome the US's huge military and geographical advantages to gain any ground. Yep. While it is possible that a major state actor like China or Russia could to take out satellites and hack critical infrastructure, they'd also have to contend with the millions of well-equipped troops on the ground and a hostile armed population. So realistically, a physical invasion isn't really a possibility, but what if America's enemies could get what they wanted without an invasion? Well, it turns out it's much easier to conquer hearts and minds in an information war than- Propaganda. This next election is going to be a shit show. Because there's going to be more in influence on this election than ever before and it's going to be chaotic let's be honest to win with soldiers on the ground and that might have something to do with russia's influence campaign in the 2016 u.s presidential elections I can see, see the after a three-year investigation a bipartisan u.s senate committee recently concluded that russia conducted an influence campaign to help donald trump get elected yeah if that's not shocking enough the report states that vladimir putin himself ordered the hacking of Democratic Party emails to be leaked over WikiLeaks. The FBI now has a warrant out for 12 Russian military intelligence officers it believes interfered in the 2016 elections. Yeah. So this is- And th that was 2016. Some of it I'm sure happened in 2020, but this next one, yeah, I think it's going to be the worst one. I really do. Serious incident. A recent report by a group of intelligence agencies claims Russia tried to interfere again in 2020, though on a smaller scale. Whether Russia continues to meddle in US politics in the future or not, the damage may already be done as Americans increasingly report a loss of faith in democracy and government institutions. But that's it for this video. That was a really good video. It was a really good video. There's a link down below to the original video. And he's totally right. Like the amount of people who just don't have any faith in politics in America is an all-time high and I feel like it's only going to get worse and that is what could destroy a nation not so much people landing on the beaches let's be honest I'm sure you can agree but let me know what you think in the comments section down below I'd love to know your opinion and your uh your uh yeah your opinion and your thoughts on what's to come with America it's definitely weird talking about America without being there anymore me personally there'll also be a link down below to dreadnought media check that out as well other than that i love you all have a wonderful day goodbye